Well, hello, One Ps, and welcome back. We're going to talk about a very special property today called the distributive property. So our goal is I can multiply a polynomial by a constant using the distributive property. So we're going to try and figure out what the distributive property is first of all. Um, remember that multiplying can be thought of as repeated addition. So if I say I have three times these brackets, and that's what this means. If there's nothing in between a number and a bracket, it means times. Remember, we don't use those time signs anymore because it looks too much like an X. So this means that you have three polynomials, um, three of these bracketed polynomials all added together. That's what multiplying means. So this actually means that I have 4X minus 3 plus 4X minus 3 plus 4X minus 3. Now if I want to add those all up, I can. Um, I have a 4x. Remember these brackets aren't really doing anything when there's a plus in front of it. We can just take the brackets off. So I've got 4x minus 3 plus 4x minus 3 plus 4x minus 3. And I've got three 4x's. So that's 4x plus 4x plus 4x is 12x. And negative 3 plus negative 3 plus negative 3 is negative 9 when I collect like terms. But can you think of an easier way to do this? Take a look at um, this bracket is what we started with and this is what we ended with. So we got 3 um, times 4x minus 3 equals 12x minus 9. Do you see some other way that, that things might be related here? Uh, well, it actually looks like this 3 multiplied by the 4x is, could give us 12x. And then what if I take the 3 and multiply it by the 3 here? That actually gives me this negative 9. So I could just take the 3 and multiply it through the brackets. Okay? And that's actually a much easier way than writing it out again. So just multiply each term in the brackets by, oh, 2, not 2, 3 in this case. Multiply each term in the brackets by the 3 out front. So let's try this one. Um, it's got three terms in there, but that shouldn't scare us. We're just going to take the 5 and multiply it through the brackets, just like that. So 5 times 2x squared. And let's get rid of these so we can do it one at a time. I'm going to do it in different colors too. I'm going to take the 5 and multiply by the 2x squared. That means I have 5 2x squareds. Well, if I have 5 2x squareds, I actually have 10x squareds. And now let's do the next one. I'm going to use the green marker here. I have 5 negative 4x's. Well, if I have 5 negative 4x's, I actually have negative 20x. And lastly, if I take the blue one here, I have 5 times 2. Well, that one's easy. 5 times 2 is 10. So this is actually my answer. Now, this has this is a property that's well known in math and we use it all the time. You're going to use it forever from here on in. This is called the distributive property or the distributive law because we distribute the outside term, this one here, through the brackets to all the terms inside the bracket. Um, and at this point you must be you might be saying to yourself, but I thought we had to do what is in the brackets before we multiplied. Bedmus tells us so. But in this case we can't actually do anything in the brackets uh, because we don't know what x is. And since we don't know what x is, and since these things in the brackets don't have like terms, none of those terms are like. Uh, since the things in the brackets do not have like terms, we can't do anything in the brackets. Nothing can go together. I don't know what x is, so I can't calculate it. Um, so we're going to try a couple numeric examples to see if I can actually skirt around um, Bedmus a little bit this way. So here's two numeric examples. Um, we're going to evaluate this expression two different ways. The first way is using Bedmus. Bedmus tells us I have to do the brackets first. So I get 5 times 8. 10 minus 2 is 8. And then 5 times 8 is 40. Well, 
the distributive law tells us that I can do this multiply. I can take the 5 out front and multiply it by everything in the brackets. So 5 times 10 is 50, and 5 times negative 2 is negative 10, and so 50 minus 10 is 40. So you can see we actually get the same thing, same answer. And so this is just an example of where the distributive property holds. So when a question requires that you use the distributive law, it will most likely contain the word expand. So expand is the fancy word for use the distributive law. Just highlight that in pink right now. Um, so anytime you see the word expand, you can think you're going to have to put that something through the brackets. So expand the following expressions. Gladly. I like distributive law. It's easy. I'm going to take the 3 and multiply it by the 5x squared. Well, if I have 3 5x squareds, I actually have 15 x squareds. And then I'm going to take the 3 and multiply it by the 2. And 3 times 2 is 6, so plus 6. So that's all there is to it. This 3 times 5 here gives me this 15. And then it's the 3 times the 2 gives me the 6. Let's see. Here's another example. And look here, it says, remember, multiplying by a negative number will switch the signs. So you got to remember your, um, your rules for working with integers. I'm going to move this up a little bit. Um, so I need to take the negative 3 and multiply it by the x squared. So that's going to give me negative 3x squared. And then I'm going to take the negative 3 and multiply it by the positive 6x. That's going to give me negative 18x. And then I'm going to take the negative 3 and multiply it by the negative 3. Negative 3 by negative 3 is positive 9. So this goes right with this. Remember, multiplying by a negative number will switch the signs. Do we have anything more here? Let's take a look. Oh, one more. This one says expand and simplify the following expression. So what we're going to do is expand each bracket and then collect up the light terms when you're done. So this word here, expand, means to use distributive law, and simplify means to collect like terms. So I'm just going to point at them. You might want to want to do this too. This says distributive law, distribute, and this one means collect, like terms. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, we're going to treat this like two different questions, only we're going to write it all on one line. So we're going to take the 2 and multiply it by the 2x squared, and that's going to give me 4x squared. Then we're going to take the 2 and multiply it by the 6x, and 2 times 6 is 12, so we're going to plus 12x. Then we're going to take the 2 and multiply it by the 7, and we get plus 14. Now that 2 doesn't belong to the next bracket because we ended the bracket. It's only in front of this one. It's only multiplying this one. But this negative 5 belongs, so we're going to multiply the negative 5 through. Negative 5 times 3x squared is negative 15x squared. And then negative 5 times negative 4 is positive 20. Now we get to the simplify where it's collect the like terms, so I'm going to use different colors here. Uh, I'm going to start with the biggest power of x, which is 4x squared, and I have a negative 15x squared. If I put 4x squared with negative 15x squared, I get negative, because I get more negatives than positives, 11x squared. Um, I have this positive 12x, and there's nothing to go with it, so I just write down plus 12x. And then lastly, I have this positive 14 and a positive 20 that are just constants. Positive 14 and positive 20 is positive 34. And that concludes this video on distributive law.